of school. Down here at the river today, I want to do a couple different fishing techniques. Uh, one, you may have remembered Norseman had a video up on a retrievable trot line. I thought that was a great idea, so I'm going to set up one up for myself and uh, see how that works out. Um, he had an excellent video on it, but he had to take it down due to some uh, job related reasons. I believe he said he learned it in Norway. But what I want to do with this retrievable trot line, if you look back here, get out of your way. Look back here, in between this deadfall and the other side of the bank, there's some logs sitting down. That kind of makes a funnel for fish to come through. So what I'm going to do is string a line across there. You can see a couple jumping in there now. I'm going to put a couple hooks on it and uh, leave it set up and see what happens. So let me get to this. All right, guys, I did. I took a piece of bank line, just broke it down into three separate pieces. What I wanted to show you guys real quick, I'm sure a lot of you already know this knot or a knot that'll work, but I wanted to show you a real quick knot that's great for securing fish hooks. We got the eye of our hook here. If I get started here. Pass our line through. So the line is through our eye. Do is bend that over and twist this down five or six twists. So now we have this. Notice right here we've made a loop. Take that tail in, go through that loop. So now we have this. I'm just going to take that tail in and go through this loop that we just made and pull that down. Now we have our fish hook tied on. I'll just take nip that end off. We have a pre-rigged leader so when we go to set this trot line up we can just start tying these on. We ain't got to sit and make them because we already made them ahead of time. Alright guys, let's look what I got. got. A piece of bank line wrapped around this knob in a loop across the river tied around that branch right there right there and it comes back all right let me get the camera set up here and I'll show you how I'm gonna rig this what I got is the knot right here where I loop this line what I think I'm going to do with that is go ahead and send that to the other side of the river. And I'll explain to you why I'm doing that in a second. Okay, I got that to the other side. Why I did that is I'm going to tie my lines on here while I'm standing here at the edge and just keep advancing this so my lines go out across the river. What I sent the knot across for is when I got these knots or these knotted lines on here out I want that knot to be up here on my bank side so in case I gotta get it loose and pull something in the knots here and not on the other side of the river. So that's why I did that. Alright guys what I got here is our pre-rigged pre -rigged lines we had and my line going across the river. So I'm going to do measure how far down the water I want this to hang. And I'm just going to tie it onto my line. I think I'm going to tie it like a timber hitch. And then just 
back that up with a quick release overhand knot. Now I have this line hanging down off of my main line. I cheated a little bit and brought some gulp here. I'm just going to take a little chunk of that. Put it on my hook. Drop it in the water. I'm going to pull my line out. I get the spacing I want. I'll take another one here. Exact same thing. I'm just gonna leave this extra line on here so all I have to do is pull out that overhand that I got backing up that timber hitch and I can change the length of my line if I want to for uh, adjusting depth. Hopefully I can keep my dog out of the line here. <laughs> so we'll mess that one out. Take our third one here. Oh, we got a hit. Look at that, we got a bite already. <laughs> Little creek chub I can see him down there. Fish are already hitting this line, just bouncing all over the place. I think we actually got one. He's not on there. So I can advance this knot out there. Now we have a three line set across there. I'm going to grab the camera real quick and we'll look at this closer. Okay, we got our line coming across. You can see our drop lines tied on, running out. Let's see if we can get a bite on camera here. Let me wait till we get one. I'll kick her back on. Well, that didn't take long. I already have a bite on it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's see if he gets on there without us having to hook him. Doesn't seem to be. Yep, there he comes back. Ah, we'll see what happens, guys. Camera freaking out. Anyways, guys, here's our line coming around this log. Like I said, back out, around that one, back. Tighter hooks on just like we uh, discussed there. Now it's retrievable. Pretty cool setup. I like to thank my buddy Norseman for uh, teaching me that. So, we'll, uh, yeah, there's a bite on this one. It obviously works. We'll see if we get something hooked on here without uh, human intervention, and uh, we'll get back to it.
All right, guys, I come out here. I want to set up a bank line, throw it uh, right out here in the river. What we got in here is a lot of carp, and the way they like to take bait is they'll take it slow and work on it and just swim away. They don't come up and hit it hard and set the hook themselves. So what I want to do is set up a bank line that will set the hook for us when we're not here when the fish hits. What I did is I took my bank line, this this is the end that's going to be out in the river, and since we're going to tie this bank line to a springy anchor anyways, because this stuff's pretty strong just like this, what we got to worry about is fish doing this. So we want this on a springy anchor to have a little bit of shock and give so they don't break our line over time. So what I'm going to do to make this set itself, so I tied it to my anchor, and I drove in the ground a fork stick. This is all going to start looking real familiar to you here in a minute. I got myself a longer stick and a short one for a toggle. I want to do down, pull this spring down. The tension I want, we're going to have to adjust this for how much set we want in this hook. I'm going to go about there. I'm going to tie this toggle in just like we normally would. So now I have a toggle tied into my line. What I'm going to do is pass that under my fork stick so I got it caught like this. Now this stick that we caught. I'm going to set this down here against the ground and just barely under the edge of that. Keeping my face back while I release the tension. So what I have here is my line that's going out to the river under tension caught by this toggle and this little lever. So the rest of my line going out to the river here I'm just going to take tie a small clove hitch in. I'm going to leave a little bit of slack in between. I'm going to tie that around the end of my lever. So now this line will go out in the water. What will happen, depending on how we set the tension of this toggle, to get out of the way so it don't get smacked here. This line's going out to the fish. He's going to pull on it. It's going to pull this lever down, releasing the toggle, setting our fish hook for us like this. We get this back around here, guys, and I'll get a close up view going. All right, toggle under the fork. Our little lever stuck down here against the ground. Get her toggle around here. And catch it with our stick. With our face out of the way when we release the tension. So there, let me move the camera around. We'll get a little closer look at this. Alright guys, now we're back here, we can have a close look at this. You see our fork right here, drove it into the ground. Right here's our line coming down from our spring. It's tied around our toggle here, which is passed through the fork. Then the end of it is trapped by this lever we have running down to the ground, sticking up in the air. Now this line runs out, and this will be one the fish poles on. If you notice, I never spliced this line anywhere. I want this all one piece in case one of these parts breaks, my line's still one continuous piece clear to my anchor point. So, I'll hold this toggle so we can see it release here slowly. The fish will pull on this, pulling this out of the way and releasing the toggle. 
and set that. Just come down through with our toggle. Take our stick against the ground. Then catch our toggle. Depending on how far up or down we have this lever, we can adjust what it takes to set this off. If we put it up here, it's going to take a lot of pulling to pull this down and pull this down and out. But if we got this set just right at the edge, it don't take much of anything to get that out of there. What we're going to have to watch is too is our toggle doesn't get cocked over and when this releases catches itself. So you're going to want to make sure that this is down below here that way when this releases it goes out. So there you go guys. A extra hand when you're setting some bank lines and you want to be able to set the hook. Alright guys, give this about an hour now. Uh, probably ain't enough time, but we were getting some bites as soon as we put it out. Uh, I need to get going, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this in and see if we have anything. Nice thing is, now I can just pull this across, come up to a hook, don't have anything. They're working on that bait pretty hard. that one on by. It's my second hook. It's stripped empty. And my third hook is stripped empty and has a piece of something snagged out of the river. So, Anyways, guys, pretty convenient setup to get in and out. Uh, we're obviously getting some bites on it. We got that on film. I think I might need just a touch smaller hooks than what I got in my kit here. Uh, so that's a good experience for me. I know I need to get a few smaller hooks, put them in my kit. All right, guys, I thought I'd take a minute here at the end of this video to discuss a few things. It's been on my mind here recently. Um, a lot of these things I show, like this trot line and this bank line, may be against the law in your state. In my state, they're legal. I'm not telling you to go out and break the law and do this. It might be a skill to practice and know you can do it. Maybe set it up without a hook on it or something to keep it legal. Um, things like that in the last video I did on boiling and pasteurizing in a plastic bottle. Those aren't things for the everyday hiker, guys. These are techniques for survival situations. Breaking the law or drinking water boiled in a plastic bottle might be what keeps your ass alive. And I'd rather be a lawbreaker that drank a little bit of BPA than the dead guy laying in the woods from dehydration. So keep this information for what it's meant to be used for guys a lot of this isn't everyday things so with that said I appreciate all your guys support that you've shown me more than you can know I thank you for all your views I'll see you on the next one